the title of my message in this few more minutes and we'll close and pray a leap of faith a leap of faith a leap of faith or a step of faith I do a lot of traveling well in the past and each time I travel I accumulate what we call miles and the more travel the more miles I get meaning points listen to me now and this point is not just point it is point to give you an advantage this miles has gotten me to fly to certain places across the world for free the more you travel the more you get more miles and so I discovered that as a child of God God was talking to me yesterday some of y'all make sacrifice or put in mileage in your cars to come to church you put in mileage to come to church to worship you catch a ride that's mileage you're putting and God is looking at your miles amen you have a mile what I call a spiritual mile there will never be a reward of your mile unless there are points in your mile so every spiritual mileage you are putting by helping somebody by picking up somebody by doing whatever you're doing for the things of God you are increasing your spiritual mile that's where you can tap off the blessings of God that's why with my mileage I have a business lounge that I can stay by myself I fly business class where I can fly just by myself because of the miles I've accumulated some of you don't know that what you are doing for God you are actually building miles for yourself you're actually building spiritual miles for yourself it's not in vain there is a record if you make sacrifice it means you are adding to the miles of God as you're giving your tithes and offering those are miles you're giving as you're helping somebody those are miles you're giving you cannot attract what you don't know how to honor it takes you doing for God to do it takes you giving for God to give so what am I saying before you take a leap of faith you must first believe that whatever I'm doing I'm doing it because I believe in God I'm not doing it to make anybody feel good so what am I saying I'm saying this to give you a secret we're about to cross over don't take the things of God for granted do not take the things of God for granted. You are not here by accident. You are not here by accident. So a leap of faith will push you to a place of believing. If you don't believe, you can never, you can't take that step. Why should I do it? I don't have to do it. I'm doubting. Why am I going to do it? Let me show you something that happened here in the scripture. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 14. Book of Matthew 14, 22 to 35, ESV. Book of Matthew 14, 22 to 35. Let me show you something that happened when you have to register things. You're coming to church. Thank God for those of you who came out to decorate the Christmas yesterday. I really appreciate you guys. For me, You have just added more mileage to your miles. Mama ain't going to pay you. I ain't going to pay you. No. As a matter of fact, thank God for big sis. She, she left work or whatever and even brought some food for us to eat. Mileage. Leap of faith. Now I understand some of you were busy and working. That's fine. I'm not saying anything about that. But I'm just trying to make a point here. Give me that book. Look at what it says. You must believe in what God has spoken concerning you for this year to manifest. He said, and they all ate. Ooh, give me 22. We know they ate. He says immediately he made the disciples. That's after they have eaten and over, you know, all of that and jolly. He said immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. And while he dismissed the crowd, wait right there. While he dismissed the crowd, the Lord bless you. Give me your hand. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. There's a newness inside of you. It's a new spirit inside of you. And he says, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him. And to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd, sometimes you have to pull away from the crowd. 
sometimes I don't have anything against big churches no I don't but I want to go where the presence of God is I want to go where the power of God is. I want to go where the, 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 the substance is. The real anointing and the oil. A lot of you like to chase crowd instead of chasing the cross. A lot of you like to be around the crowd and cheer up. I don't care how you hip and holler in the crowd. Where there is no presence, there is no power. I would rather be in the presence of God and holler and receive a move. And receive a shaking on the inside of me. Am I talking to somebody here? And he said, he told them, let's, crowd, go. We don't need the crowd. I need your closer to me. Go to the next verse. Look at what he says. In this last lap that we're in, you can't run after every crowd. You see, after he had dismissed them, the crowd, he went up to the mountain by himself. Even when he called on some people, to come he told them wait here and he went to the mountain by himself sometimes you gotta learn even how to be alone I don't hate you I don't dislike you but I ain't answering this call right now I want to talk to God I, I'm not going with you this time uh, they want me to be at this party they want me to be at this club oh, boy right now no I just want to drive to this park by myself I just want to be alone for a moment I need to clear my head because the crowd will only cause more confusion the crowd will only distort you with noise the crowd will only confuse you with what God is saying but when you are alone that's why he told the crowd move away and he brought the disciples with him even with the disciples he told them wait here I'm going to the mountain the mountain means a place of waiting the mountain means a place of prayer the mountain means a place of testimony the mountain means a place of consecration the mountain means a place of sanctification I need to sanctify my brain the reason why some of you are dealing with all kind of things God says you are the head but then you are hearing all the things on social media you're hearing your friends say this and say that and you're confused and your mind is blowing up because you have never been alone take some time to be alone and you will hear God clearer it's not a bad thing I'm not saying that be alone even when I need to call you and you won't answer your phone. I will pray on you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying be alone. You say, Pastor said, don't answer nobody. And then you are rude to everybody. Pastor said, be alone. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying, sometime it is important for you to be alone. He says, when the evening came, he was alone. That means from morning to what? Evening. He was what? alone. How many of you have woken up one day and turned off your phone for the whole day? Good. I just need this. I, I just need to clear up my head. Because social media is the first thing everybody gets up. Boom, 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 boom. Who texted me? How many likes did I get? You don't know that many of those likes are your enemies. They are your haters. I'm not saying they're not genuine ones. But a lot of them, they are just peepers. They are looking at peeping at things. But he said, when evening came, he was there alone. Go to the next verse. I'm running out of time. So I can pray and then we get into. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land. Beaten by the waves for the wind was against it. Now hold it right there. Beaten by the waves. Beaten by the waves. Uh, beaten by the waves. The boat signifies something. The boat is a carrier. The boat is a carrier. But it says the boat was beaten by the waves. And it was all alone by itself. I don't know how many of you have been beaten by the storm of life. How many of you have been beaten by the wave of life? How many of you have been beaten by everything and situations and conditions? I don't know how many of you have been beaten by difficulties and shame. How many of you have been beaten? by all kind of things relationship beaten all kind of things he said and it was beaten by the waves for the wind was against it when will this sickness go when will I receive my healing when will my miracle come beaten by the wave 
beaten by the wave. Lord, you know I need this deliverance. Beaten by the wave. I trust you. Beaten by the wave. I'm still waiting for my testimony. Beaten by the wave. But I'm alone. I'm alone in this place. Nobody to call. Everybody is just a user. Everybody don't care like they say they care. Beaten by the wave. Beaten by the wave. Rejected. Beaten by the wave. I've been there. I've been there. Beaten by situations in the family background, lineage beaten to a point where prayer was difficult for you. Coming to church was difficult for you. Trusting God was difficult for you because you have been beaten by the storms and the wave of life. But in the midst of that, he said something. Go to the next verse. As I come to a conclusion. And in the fourth watch of the night. In the fourth watch of the night. When everybody and everywhere was quiet. And it seems like there was no answer coming from anywhere. In the fourth watch of the night, he came to them. God doesn't show up until the night comes. God doesn't show up until it gets dark in your situation. God doesn't show up until things, the situation gets so unbearable to you. The enemy's worst blow comes when you're about to win. God shows up in your matter when you're about to give up. That's when he shows up. When that rent is due and you don't even know how to pay, he shows up. In the midnight hour, that's when he shows up. When you do everything you can do and God says, now I'm about to step in. When you are abandoned by yourself, in the midnight hour that's when he shows up that's when he shows up he shows up miraculously he doesn't show up like they say Santa showed up no he doesn't show up with just like that flying from the no he shows up walking on the sea walking on the sea. Go to the next. The Bible says he walked on the sea to their situation. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were terrified and said is it a ghost? Is it God? I'm not sure. I saw a little miracle. Is it God? Is it God? And they cried out in fear. Fear terrified them. Some of you need to learn how to deal with that fear because in this last lap fear is going to grip you. Oh, am, am I going to make it in 2024? Am I going to survive? Oh Lord, I thought I won already but it looked like I'm losing again. It looked like I'm taking another step backward. Fear caught them. Go to the next verse. Look at what it says. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid because I will never leave you nor forsake you. It is me. Go to the next verse. Don't quit yet because it is me that is still holding on to you. And Peter answered him and, and you answered him and James answered him and Jeremiah answered him and said Lord if it is you command me to come because I've been here for so long and come to me on the water and guess what he said go to the next verse look at what he says and he said come Peter he says come Jeremiah he says come Nordens get out of the boat get out of your comfort zone get out of your fear and walk on the water and come to me it doesn't matter how the problem is you must learn how to get out of your situation you must learn how to get out of your comfort zone until you step in you can step out I'm a preacher. Until you learn how to step out of your comfort zone. The reason why many of us have dwelt in and the wave has been is because we refuse. We are still dwelling in our comfort zone. We're still here. I'm praying. No, no, no. You can't be there and pray. You've got to learn to step out and launch out. Until you step out. Until you step out, God can never step in. Am I talking to somebody here? Until you step out, God can never step in. Until you take a risk, faith is not ignited. Hey, 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 I say until you learn to take a risk, faith is not ignited. Go to the next one. Look at what he says. This happens to many of us. 
God said to you, come to Living Priest Church and be a part of Living Priest Church. It was a step of faith. And be a part. Everything that is going to happen to you, you don't know yet. But for God to order you here, there's a reason and a purpose for that. But until you key into that divine understanding, until you key into that divine purpose, you will not fulfill what God has called you here to do. Listen to this. Man of God, the Lord told him, Peter, step out. He came out. And then he began to walk on the water. My God, you began, he was already walking into his destiny and fulfilling what God has called me to do. Oh, pastor prophesied to me. He's walking out for me. But then all of a sudden, a wind. Somebody say a wind. He saw a wind. You got distracted. My question is, what is distracting you right now? Whatever that is distracting you is against, is an enemy that is against your destiny. Whatever that is distracting you now is an enemy that is against your purpose, the will of God. Whatever that is distracting you is taking you out of focus from God. I don't know what it is, but it says, hey, the wind was against him and he was afraid. And he, he began to sink and cried and cried, Lord, save me. He was already walking into his fullness. He was already walking into his destiny. But yet he began to sink. Why? Because he got distracted. He looked at the problem. Oh, he looked at what the naysayers are saying. He looked at what the gossipers are saying. He looked at what the people are suggesting to him. He was hearing all kind of lies. He was listening to all kind of things. And the enemy was playing trick with his mind. And he began to look at yourself as a failure. Am I really sure God is the one that told me? And the enemy is sinking you more and more and more. The more you have that fear and negativity, the more the enemy is sinking you. But then the Bible says, he cried out to the Lord, save me. I've come to talk to two people. It's time to cry out to God this morning. Tell him to save you. He's available to save you. Tell him to save you. He's ready to save you. Tell him to hold you and not let go. They discourage you when they should have been encouraging you. Tell him to save you. They betrayed you when they should have been loyal to you. Tell him to save you. You must be able to take a leap of faith to overcome the storms of life must be ready to overcome the storms of life what are the storms that you're dealing with in this last lap 2024 God has already given me a word for 2024 it's a year of advancement but then the Lord has been teaching me and showing me glimpses of what 2024 is going to look like it's going to be a tough year it's going to be a challenging year but the word he gives specifically is a year of advancement to them that believe. Because there's going to be wave in the storm. There's going to be wave on the boat. There's going to be rocky. But as long as you keep your eyes on him, you're going to keep walking on the water and walking. Whatever they say about me, I don't care. Whatever they call me, I don't care. Whatever they define me, I don't care. Whatever they said, I don't care. Whatever happens, I don't care. All I know is that I got my mind stayed on him. I don't know who I come to talk to this morning. My situation would not deter me. My condition would not move me. I got my eyes straight on Christ the cross. I got my eyes straight on him because he's my greatest deliverer. He's my greatest provider. He's my greatest protector. I come to prophesy to two people here. Your blessing is about to take place. Your breakthrough is about to take place. Your favor is about to open. Your doors are about to open. Another new level is about to happen in your life. God is about to change your story. God is about to give you beautiful ashes. What you lost years back. God is about to give you trouble for your trouble. I don't know who I'm talking to. But God said, hold on. Don't give up yet. I'm about to rewrite your name. I'm about to give you a new song. Something is about to change. Our homes are about to be blessed. God is about to bless you with beauty. Beauty, beauty, beauty. God is about to bless you with greatness, greatness. Overtaken in the name of Jesus. Nakia. I hear the Lord said, weep no more. Weep no more. I hear the Lord said, weep no more. Nakia, weep no more. He saw.
saw the best in you. He saw what is on the inside of you. He saw the fight in you. He saw your heart and the prayers in you. Your desires and your wish. <laughs> the enemy have tried in many ways and knock you and hit you in so many different angles. Yes. But you know what? This woman here still trusts God like never before. She said, I know but God. I know but God. Don't get angry at anybody. Get angry at the enemy. And keep on praising him. He said, I'm about to change your whipping into a dance. I don't know how, why you came to church today. Yeah. But you needed to hear this because this word was for you. This word was for you. I did not talk to you. I didn't talk to you. But the Lord said, whip no more. When they see the worst in you, God is seeing the best in you. When everybody sees something different, concerning you don't understand you they look like you're complaining too much <laughs> yes look like you're complaining too much that's what it sounds like yeah i feel the spirit of god complaining too much yes but god brought yes sing it brother but he says i'm about to look god brought you this morning to wipe your tears away i haven't seen you in a very long time you stepped in here, the Holy Spirit is picking you up. He says, I'm going to turn your mourning into dancing. That complaint, sometimes the enemy will get you to a place where you want to, oh, I'm about to lose this now, but Jesus helped me. I saw it. Jesus helped me. But he says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. I will shield your family, your children. I will cover you all in the beauty of his holiness. He say in this season of your life, there's, there's something new that God is doing. That's why you're facing, I don't know what you're facing right now. It, it looked like everything was settled and done, but all of a sudden, the enemy is showing up again. You are about to win. I say you're about to win it again. You won it before you win it again. You won it years before you win it again. You'll be winning before you're going to win it again. He's going to try to hit you so hard, but you're going to come out victorious. He's going to try everything concerning you and your family, your finances, whatever he's doing right now. You're going to win again in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, rest upon her. Grant her strength and focus on you. Let her be more focused on you. Give him thanks and praise more for the things that he has not even done yet. Thank him for the ones he's done because he will never leave you. I baptize you as a father, as a spiritual father in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Cover them and our children and our entire family and our husband. Secure them, Father. Give them strength. Strength. That's what you're asking for. Strength and grace. I need strength and grace. Do that which no man can do. In Jesus' mighty name. Lift up your hands, somebody. Hallelujah. Go back to your seat. Yes, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Every time I come this way, I keep seeing blessings on the two of you. I don't know what it is, but I just keep seeing blessing. Whatever you're trusting God for, I just keep seeing that blessing. You know. I saw something like a prayer intercessor, but I saw a warrior here. <laughs> I saw a warrior here. Yeah, I saw a warrior. Yes, it's an angel sent. God sent. God sent. God sent. Do you, is your, is your mother or grandmother still alive? My mother. My mother. How old is she? 65. She's 65. Where is she? She's like here in Houston. I look she's okay. She's in Houston somewhere. She believe in God? Yes. Your mother is a prayer warrior. Your mother is a prayer warrior. I saw a woman interceding all the time for you guys. The Lord brought her to my spirit. 
The enemy wanted to do something in her life, but prayer, prayer secured her. Prayer kept her. As I'm talking right now, she's constantly keeping you all in prayer. There's a desire. There's something she's desiring. And God said, he's going to visit you. He's going to visit you. He's going to visit you. There's more blessing coming. There's more blessing coming. There's more blessing coming. Amen. Lift up your hand. Holy Spirit, pour out the fresh oil on your people. I know today's communion service we're supposed to close and just uh, take our communion. But usually on the first Sunday of the month, we take it a little bit and let the Holy Spirit move. Father, pour out a fresh oil on your people. Ziadra, Ziadra, Zedra, come. Zedra, come. I'm going to pray for you, Zedra. Stand right here. I saw a little girl standing beside you. She's maybe about this tall or so, somewhere. She's, she's, she's going so fast. I don't know who she is to you, but you love her so much. It's not a mistake. The Lord told me to tell you, I don't know if it's your niece or your daughter or whoever, what he said, that's a destiny child. That's a destiny baby. Do you have any child or niece or nephew or something? How old is she? Four. She's four. How tall is she? She's about that tall. The Lord said for me to tell you that that is a destiny child. Every arrow of sickness, every attack of the enemy concerning that child is twatted in the name of Jesus. We stand as an oracle. We stand as a testimony. We cover her and that child in the name of Jesus. The Lord said that he shows you some things in dreams in the past. There are some times, if you remember, you have seen some dreams and you don't really even understand it. Have you had some weird kind of dreams in the past about certain things like my dad dying before it happened and a lot of stuff no any form of accident stray bullet or any form of confusion will harm her in any type of way we cover her with the blood of Jesus because she's a destiny child. She's a destiny child. We pray for her. We pray for her. Totally. Using you as a point of contact. We secure her life. Totally. Baptize you in the name of the Father. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. The Lord said I'm going to cause you to smile again. I'm going to cause you to smile again. A lot of people, ooh. A lot of people don't understand you, misquote you, misjudge you. Yes. But you're a strong woman built on the inside. And I hear you say, I don't even care. I don't even care. That spirit of I don't care is what you need to move on to your next level with. Don't let nobody define you. Let him alone define you because your destiny is in God's hand. Go and be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, put your hands together if you love him today. Come on, celebrate his goodness. Celebrate his goodness. 
celebrate his goodness hallelujah